So we'll talk briefly about the nomenclature of enzymes, but the nomenclature here is very different from the nomenclature we've learned for organic chemicals. The, the enzyme names give us information about their function, not about their structure, and that's very different than how we learn to name the organic chemicals, like the carboxylic acids and the amines. And, and so they focus, the names will focus on the type of reaction that is catalyzed and also on the substrate. And the substrate is just our fancy word for the reactant. What is the reactant that the enzyme catalyzes a reaction for? That's the substrate. It acts on, on the substrate. So here are some um, basic principles of the enzyme names. The suffix ACE identifies a substance as an enzyme. So anything that ends in ASE, lipase, sucrase, lactase. Now that's very similar to some of the um, carbohydrate names, lactose, sucrose. But changing that O to an A means that it's an enzyme. The structure is most likely completely different, but it's an enzyme. There are some enzymes that have the suffix in. Um, two examples are trypsin and pepsin. These are the enzymes that were identified um, earlier, and so we retain their names even though they've decided that they're going to use ACE endings for, for the enzymes. These, most of these are digestive enzymes that end in the in suffix. The type of reaction that's catalyzed is often noted with a prefix. So here, oxidase. Ace tells us it's an enzyme. Oxid tells us that this catalyzes an oxidation. So the name is going to give us clues about it being an enzyme and what kind of a reaction it catalyzes. And it may also indicate what the substrate is. So glucose oxidase. This catalyzes the oxidation of glucose. Pyruvate carboxylase. This acts on pyruvate. I think it does a carboxylation. Um, if the type of reaction is omitted, like in urease and lactase, I forgot to italicize that one, Urease acts on urea, lactase acts on lactose. The type of reaction isn't specified here. If it isn't specified, it's assumed to be hydrolysis. So you should be familiar with these ideas of enzyme names. So here's, here's an exercise. Predict the function of the following enzymes. So maltase, what do you think that acts on? What's the substrate? Maltose. So it acts on maltose. It, does it indicate what the reaction type is? No. So then what, what will we assume that it is? Hydrolysis. So this catalyzes the, I don't know where I got a D from, hydrolysis of last maltose. How about lactate dehydrogenase? What's that going to catalyze? Dehydrogenase looks like what? Take off the ace and end ation. Dehydrogenation, right? Some of these words are really long and you're not sure which syllable to put the emphasis on, right? So, dehydrogenation, and what does that mean, just in regular words? Removal of hydrogen. Dehydrogenation of what? Lactate. How about fructose oxidase? What does that do? It catalyzes the oxidation of? Fructose. Yeah, can't write. Oxidation of fructose. Maleate isomerase. How 
Isomerase. What? Just take a wild guess. Isomerism or something, that's a very good guess. Has something to do with isomers of malleate, right? Well, isomerase is, is giving us a reaction type. So it's an isomerization. So it's going to catalyze the formation of isomers. Isomerization. Isomerization of malleate. <coughs> Any questions? So those are some general concepts about the nomenclature of enzymes. And then there are several different classes of enzymes. And within these, there are also subclasses, of course. Isn't that lovely? Um, the first one, an oxidoreductase. Well, that looks like oxidation reduction, right? So these oxidoreductases catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. These enzymes are going to have a coenzyme. And the coenzyme is going to be oxidized when the substrate is reduced. This, the coenzyme will be reduced when the substrate is oxidized. So this can catalyze the oxidation of the substrate or the reduction of the substrate. And it does that by having a cofactor, a coenzyme in it, that becomes oxidized or reduced. So the example here is um, lactate and... NAD plus. NAD plus is a coenzyme. And so here's the oxidized form, and there's the reduced form. Here's lactate. And one of the ways we defined oxidation was looking at the number of carbon-oxygen bonds, right? Here we have one carbon-oxygen bond here. This guy's staying the same, so we're going to ignore him carbon-oxygen bond here, and then over here we've got two carbon-oxygen bonds. So this is more oxidized than this one. It was gain of oxygen or carbon-oxygen bonds or loss of hydrogen. And so this has lost hydrogen. The coenzyme NAD plus has gained hydrogen, so it has become reduced. The name of the, the enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase because Removing a hydrogen is involved in oxidation and reduction. So this is an example. Another class is transferase. As the name implies, this has to do with a transfer, the transfer of a functional group. There's two main subcategories, transaminase. There's transaminase. So this transfers an amino group. And then there's kinases, and that one doesn't have so many clues in it. That, trans that catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate group from ATP to produce ADP. And we will learn a lot more about those two molecules when we talk about metabolism and energy production. But the T stands for triphosphate, and the D stands for diphosphate. So this had three phosphate groups, and here's glucose. And this is, um, this is called, the enzyme is hexokinase. It, it transfers phosphate groups to hexoses. <coughs> so it, it catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate group from the ATP to the glucose. So here's the phosphate group now on the glucose, and the ATP has become ADP adenosine diphosphate. Hydrolase. Hydrolase catalyzes a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis reaction, you've got water being added to a bond and causing that bond to break. And these enzymes are very important in digestion. 
So a carbohydrase catalyzes the breaking of glycosidic bonds. And so here we have an example of that. Here's maltose, which is a disaccharide formed by two glucose molecules. Add water to that, and we can form two glucose molecules. We can hydrolyze this bond. The OH goes to one side and the H goes to the other, and we end up with hydroxyl groups on both. Can this reaction occur without the enzyme? Under the correct conditions, it can. But in your body, in your cells, the conditions are such that it really needs the enzyme maltase to catalyze the reaction. So a lot of these are, are just increasing the rate of reactions that we've already studied. Another subgroup of hydrolases is proteases. Prote mean, reminds me of protein. So these are enzymes that catalyze the breaking of peptide linkages in proteins. So taking that long chain of amino acids and breaking those peptide linkages and breaking it down into smaller amino acids. That's what your body has to do in order to digest protein. Lipase, this reminds us of lipids. And when we studied li lipids, we looked at triacylglycerols, and those had ester linkages. We had the glycerol molecule, which is a trialcohol, and it would react with the carboxylic fatty acids and, and form this triacylglycerol, and a lipase will um, catalyze the reaction of breaking those ester linkages. Lyase. Um, this has to do with adding a group to a double bond to get rid of the double bond or removing a group to form a double bond. And it's done in a manner that does not involve hydrolysis or oxidation. So if it involves hydrolysis or oxidation, it's going to belong to one of the other groups. But dehydratase will remove um, water from a double bond. I think I made a mistake on that. Hang on a minute. The example here is a hydratase, which is adding water. Hydratase adds water, dehydratase removes water. One results in the formation of a double bond, the other in the dissolution of a double bond. And then isomerase. These are going to calcula calculate, catalyze isomerization the rearrangement of atoms. Um, in this example, we've got 3-phosphoglycerate, and that can rearrange and form 2-phosphoglycerate. And this has this lovely long name, phosphoglyceromutase. A characteristic of isomerases is they have one reactant and one product. You're taking one molecule and just rearranging it and forming an isomer of it. Ligase catalyzes the bonding of two molecules into one. So here we've got pyruvate and carbon dioxide. And these together can form oxaloacetate. This is not an energy, energetically favorable process. It requires energy to do this. That energy has to come from somewhere. And as we'll learn later, ATP is a source of energy in the cells. So the ATP is, is providing the energy. And notice this phosphate is not being transferred to the molecule. It's just being removed. And when it's removed from the ATP, there's energy that's released. And that energy is what allows this reaction to occur where we um, add this CO2 group to the uh, pyruvate. So pyruvate carboxylase. This is a table that just kind of summarizes the main classes. And there are other, it says selected subclasses. There are other subclasses of, of these different categories and gives you just kind of an overview of what type of reaction they catalyze. So classifying enzymes by the type of chemical reaction they catalyze. So let's look at A. What main enzyme class 
does the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction belong? To what main enzyme class does it belong? What's going on here? Yeah, so we're adding a phosphate here. This is like one of those pictures you had as a kid. Which, What's different between these two pictures, right? There's a lot of letters and lines, and you have to find what's different. So let's find what's different. Here there's an OH group, and here we've got a phosphate group. And then the ATP has changed to a DP. So this has involved the transfer of a functional group from one molecule to another. So this belongs to the class called transferase. How about letter B? What's happening there? You see what's different? We've got this uh, single bond here and a double bond here. And so water has been removed. I remember the subgroup. Lyase is the main group. That was a, a dehydratase because it's taking water out. It's this this guy, these two guys right here are becoming this water molecule out over here. But the the group there was uh, the the category was lyase. Yes. This is the A ATP adenosine triphosphate, and this is adenosine diphosphate. So that's where the, the phosphorus has to come from somewhere, right? Any questions?